The pandemic has hit Jamaica, COVID-19 or the novel coronavirus. But even before it came to our shores, the global economy has been reeling from its effects. We're taking a closer look at COVID-19 and the Jamaican economy, what it means for local businesses. Will your spending power be impacted? We have a special show lined up for you today, so stay tuned. The discussion segment begins right after this break. TV talking about, look, we're not going to run out of food. So when we talk about tax cuts, I do see where people are calling for it. However, we should be tempered to say, well, the government does need money. We're not exactly flush with cash. And normally we're getting aid from the EU or from the US. They need their money for themselves. So we need to start to look to see what we as individual Jamaicans are going to do to ensure that we get through this in a good way without panicking. Rich Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. This is The Exchange, a financial gleaner and JNN business forum. I'm Javon Keyes. If you're just joining us, we're talking about the impact of COVID-19 on the local economy. Please join the discussion on social media. Share your thoughts on the local preparedness and how you think businesses will cope. Tweet us by using the hashtags The Exchange and FGJNN. Follow us on Facebook at Gleena Jamaica and at Jamaica News Network. You can also watch the program at any time on onespotmedia.com. Before we get back to the discussion, let's take a look at the most read stories in the financial gleaner for the month of February. Scotiabank pays highest dividend in history. NHT private developers to pump $55 billion into St. Catherine housing. Fesco gas supplier to go public. NCB to enter Guyana. Fesco IPO still on, but new date to be finalized in wake of Mandover fire. Trans Jamaican loses right to road rival compensation. Azan plans multi-pronged business expansion. New owner takes control of Morgan's Harbor Hotel. Pick up your copy of the Financial Gleaner this and every Friday at a store or a Gleaner vendor near you. Or log on to Gleaner online at jamaica-gleaner.com for the latest financial stories. Now, let's continue the discussion. Now, before the break, we were talking about the global impact and how businesses will be coping. But, uh, Richard, let me come back to you for a bit. Small businesses, because the outlook is saying that we should expect to be still feeling the effects of COVID-19 for some three to possibly five months, small businesses would be most impacted. What, what's the feeling from the small businesses? Do we, do we need to do more for them, you think, in this time? Well, so we've been having several discussions and um, the, the government, um, I've been particularly proactive. I have to give a lot of credit to the planning and to the execution and discussions. And obviously, we have, um, our MSME sector is very vulnerable because Alison referred to liquidity and cash flow. That's going to dry up. And that is the lifeblood of almost every organization, more so small organization that deal with traffic that's going to completely go. I mean, you know, the, the, lay, the hairdresser and the, the taxi man, the, the people in a small retail, I mean, their, their business is going to go. So there's, the government is um, has spoken to the banks, and the banks are, have, have come out there and talk about additional liquidity, delaying um, tax filing. You know, the, the governor has come out in a press release this morning, and a number of measures have been put in place that will allow some cushion of the effect. You know, I mean, no, I mean, and we're going to need that, guys. I mean, it's um, the fallout in that sector. It's which we spoke to the head of the Small Business Association and those within the JMA, and they are genuinely scared i mean these are resilient people they're strong people you have to be strong to be an entrepreneur or msab but they're genuinely scared because they're unknown there are so many unknowns but i believe that um you know there's some stuff i really can't disclose at this point but the government is actively looking at how they can support employment in the msc their country and employment and what can be done to keep the that that sector going and certainly on life support until until we pass this period. And again, we will pass this, and we're going to come out of this stronger. Alison, what kind of measures do you think would be necessary to ensure that the small businesses, they survive? Well, you know, small businesses, as I keep referring to, there's a financial literacy that is needed with all of our businesses about cash management. And, you know, we need to keep cash in our businesses, whether they're small, micro, or even large. 
Um, another issue, when it comes to employment, we're asking people to stay home. Kids are home from school. So you also have this push and pull with the work from home where you need to oversee your kids to make sure that you know, they're doing the right things from an educational perspective. I mean, I have so much respect for teachers right now. Uh, I have a grade six child that is doing PEP and I forgot volume. Some of the things that you take for granted, you know, you're, you're not appreciating more the value of our teachers. So it really brings home, how do you ensure that employers have people working from home and people working from home do it effectively and efficiently and are paid because part of the, the help that is needed is contractors. They're not going to get paid if the work that they rely on dries out. So we need to get cash into their hands because if they have nothing to pay, you know, they have no money for food or to, to maintain themselves during this period, we're going to have, to, we're going to see some issues. So the help that is needed as well Perhaps now is the time to get some financial literacy training out there, some simple things about what people should be doing to ensure that they, they maximize their cash and not spend it wildly because hoarding also takes up your cash that you may need to do other things. So I think now is the time to also get some financial literacy going. We need to start to look to see as small business people, what are we going to do when this is over? What are we gonna do now to ensure that we're more resilient? So I think now is the time to spend, to take a deep breath, watch your cash, and start to plan. Most people sometimes don't do a business plan. Now is the time to do it, to see what are the what are the contingencies. The government is talking about contingencies. Business people need to now start to look at your contingencies. Not your typical disaster preparedness, but your cash, your people, your customers. What are you gonna do now and when we're out of this? All right, Alison. So let's look at it from a macroeconomic standpoint. Now we are hearing some central banks lowering, lowering rather their fiscal poli their their fiscal policy rate down to almost zero percent. Mm -hmm. Should Jamaica look at that? Can we afford to? It's not just what we you know. You have to look at what the banks can do. The cooperatives, the you know mutual, um, the building societies. Sorry. It's, and remember, they're running a business, so they also need money to pay their bills. I have seen one bank come out and extend some terms. That is going to be needed. We also have to be practical, and if we can pay our bills, do so. Because it's not that people are, are, are expected to sit and just look for handouts. I believe that it's not just the government cutting the rates, but it's also the various persons in the financial sector really looking to see okay, if I'm dealing with contractors, can they meet all of the interest payments? Should I be giving a moratorium? So I think the banking sector needs to look to see how they can help. They've already started by saying, look, we're gonna give back for a year, the asset tax cut to the government to help. But I think we really need to look to see what more we can do. Also, as small business people, we have customers, we need to look to see what we do for them as well. So it is, it's a planning that needs to occur on every one of our parts. Indeed. Now, Richard, let me come over to you now. The exporters, you represent them. What are they saying? They, they, I know, for example, Rainforest Seafood, they would have been complaining about issues of export and losing markets. What are they saying? Um, how are they coping? No, this is very interesting. I was going to go to that point about just in the middle of a crisis, there are going to be opportunities. And this, uh, this is an important time that we don't panic, that we step aside and say, okay, what are the opportunities that are presenting themselves for us to dig in and expand our business? Huh? So, I mean, it's not all doom and gloom. We, our MSMEs, our, you know, our companies now have to be more innovative in the way we think. I mean, I think our innovative capacity has been, I mean, you know, very, very, very low at best. So this is an important time. And the way we're doing this interview now, the way we're trying to work remotely, this is something that we need to do going forward. It cuts costs, it increases productivity, more importantly. And there's different ways of doing business. On the export side, I mean, obviously, the, the biggest impact would have been on the seafood exporters initially to China, the frozen lobster, the live lobster. And, um, but in general, when we speak to customers, there's a slowdown elsewhere, but they're also seeing a pickup in potential business as they can't, companies can't source from their normal point. I mean, we have one company that produces, you know, hand sanitizer, et cetera, in Jamaica, until they got a massive order from Walgreens. You know what I mean? They hadn't seen that before. 
I mean, we are seeing increased orders as people stock up elsewhere. So we need to look now, use the, 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 the internet platform and go out there and find business. We can't just throw up our hands and wait. And we're going to find a way to, we have to find a way to fill the gap. This, this time, Jamaica, we, we, we have opportunities. We have opportunities. The COVID situation is finite. It will pass. And we have to make sure that you, when you're in a crisis, you don't have only plan to survive the crisis. You have to have plan to come out of the crisis. And this is where I think we ought to go. The export so far is maintaining. I mean, you know, so we, when I call around, people are still maintaining, they're still selling. However, the orders going beyond April are very slow in coming because everybody's holding back. Now, as Alison said, it's really about cash conservation now. You want to have that war chest with cash to kind of take it through the next few months when you're going to be carrying people that won't be able to produce. Now, speaking of cash, and I'm, I'm putting this one to Alison, when you look at the local capital markets for the last two weeks particularly, record lows. We've been seeing in the thousands with regards to the, the, the um, number of stocks declining. The, 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 it's, it's worrisome. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, you've seen what's happening in the U.S., which we really rely on the U.S. and the globe. It's understandable. So, I mean, if our stocks were going high, I'd be a little nervous. So let's put it in perspective. If the world around us is having jitters, it's normal for us to have a few jitters. But we are in Jamaica, and you know how things are. We're little, but we're talawa. So we take adversity, and we do better, and we say, how are we going to get through it? One of the things that, even when you talk about the stock market, I was very happy when the Jamaica Stock Exchange is, is allowing with the, you know some extensions of times with regards to communication and filing of financial statements because you know when you think of the auditors and the accountants, we may not be essential, but if people are not reporting, you still don't know what to buy. And we don't want our economy to stop. We need our capital markets to function. Um, one of the things that we would love to see more of is better internet and coverage. Perhaps now is the time to have some free internet across the island so that our businesses and our, you know, our, our schools and our kids from home, maybe now is the time to look at how we give some um, credit towards that and getting um, much more internet coverage. And for the capital markets, perhaps now is the time to look at companies that are doing innovation and R&D in terms of how to work smarter, more efficiently. So Richard was right, it's a time for opportunity. A lot of companies are looking to list. I do know people are like, oh my goodness, now is not the time. But I think it's a time for people to start to look to see how they improve and become better companies. And we rely a lot on remittances. When the US starts to get a little slow, our remittances get very, very, very weak. We also need to start to look amongst ourselves to see if our private consumption can be local. Eat what we grow, grow what we eat, start to look better and closer at Jamaican companies because then it's not that we're being insular, but when borders start to close, when travel starts to get tight, when the remittances start to be a problem, now is the time to look inward to say we can grow things, we can drink our milk, we can look at what we can do innovatively in Jamaica. Giving away my age, but I remember as a child, we had a Jamaican type of cow. Now is the time to start to use those types of technologies that we have within ourselves to do much more innovative types of work. So that's my, my, my take on the capital markets, that I think they will rebound. It's just we need to not panic because when people see the stock prices falling, and remember too, the stock market is cyclical. It's not always going to be 100% growing, growing, growing. And that's okay. We're not to panic. Indeed, but Richard, will it be a long road to recovery? Well, uh, first of all, I want to thank Alice for that massive plug. I mean, she's, she got it right. I mean, this is a time the world is looking inward. Every country is closing their borders. And Jamaica, I mean, when you look at a, a, a food import bill of one billion US dollar, that makes no sense in a country like ours. Our farmers now who supply the hotels are going to have excess product. This is a time for us to start consuming our own product. Jamaica has a capacity. Our, in, our import is just ridiculous. I mean, we can't grow by continuous level of um, consumer kind of import. So this is an opportunity for us to start getting back to a base where we can start producing, where we can start to have security. Because what this, has, this crisis has proven to us, you know, Javon, is how vulnerable we are. We keep saying it, 
But until you live it, you don't realize it. And we have opportunity to feed ourselves and feed others. And feed others. We have an opportunity to innovate and get stuff going. So, I mean, it's... um. Do I see a long road to recovery? The minister, Minister Clark, yesterday in a discussion said he wants this to be a V curve, a steep decline and a steep recovery. I believe that. In, um, I'm hoping that um, a worst case will be in this for you know three to five months. Hope for the worst case. I mean, I'm praying and hoping that our weather will be our ally and we just do, we have a very flat curve. And that we, but I believe the recovery post COVID will be very strong and very rapid. It has to be. But if we do the, we have to do the right things now. It's not going to happen by chance. We we'll have to prepare and put plans in place to execute. Most definitely, and we, we, we definitely have to wait and see. We will have to take a break, though. Before we go, the Prime Minister announced a rift of orders on Monday, some of which will inevitably impact local businesses. Let's take a look at that clip. All travelers from countries where there is local transmission of COVID-19 will now be required to self-quarantine for up to 14 days. Effective this Wednesday, March 18, 2020, the government will institute a new policy of requiring for seven days hence this time, this is the 18th of March, seven days from the 18th of March, that all non-essential work be done from home. So we are going to be asking the permanent secretaries to examine all functions within their respective ministries, departments and agencies and where they are considered to be non-essential, that those be carried on at home or remotely. The same is required of the private sector. Welcome back to The Exchange, a financial gleaner and JNN business forum. We've been looking at the local impact of COVID-19. We're still joined by Alison Peart and Richard Pandohi, and we're going to get back into the discussion. So let's look at the fact that we have seen eight miles and seven miles Bull Bay being declared quarantine zones, the impact on businesses. Are you hearing complaints from um, business holders? Uh, currently about that situation? Richard? Um, so, yeah, from our standpoint, I mean, obviously there are workers in these areas, but we anticipate that this is happening, will, will happen. I mean, you know, the various scenario run by many companies that will lose up to 50% of our workforce at the peak of COVID-19. So, I mean, we have planned and contingencies are in place in most, in most operations, I believe. I mean, obviously for the MSMEs, and know um, it's going to be a lot more difficult, but so far, we have had no major fallout. I mean, everybody's understanding why this has to be done, and plans have been put in place. Our workarounds are being done, so no, no major fallout at this stage. Obviously, I mean, yesterday at the press conference, um, the one of the medical officers said that we haven't really started counting yet because there has to be a point of inflection before we start counting the eight weeks to peak. So you know, but it's going to get, you know, it's. The, all the projectors will be a lot worse in terms of people's availability. So production will cut, which is why we're aggressively trying to build stock now to ensure that we have products to be available to the, the consumers and the general public. But the short answer to your question, no major impact at this stage. I mean, our concerns obviously are with the communities. I know the Ministry of Social Security and the various people are working very hard to get supplies into these communities because we, you know, at this point in time, we have to look after our citizens first and our most vulnerable. Are they expecting compensation? So, I mean, it's a, you know, <laughs> it's a really good question. I mean, it's, um, so the, the expectation that many companies, when I speak to companies, the idea is that people use a combination of sick leave and vacation, in some cases, special sick leave. But, um, they, you know, they, and by law, there's no requirement for compensation. But many, many companies I've spoken, spoken to intend to be 
there for the employees in this time. I mean, this is a time to come together and be together, and it requires it requires um, everybody putting something into it. You know? I mean, it's a bit, we expect at this time that we come together. And I mean, I haven't heard any major pushback. I mean, it's, you know, sick leave at this point, vacation leave where necessary, but people are going to work to protect their employees. I mean, our most important resources are the people. We have to be there for them at this time. Equally, they have to be there to make sure that the business can continue um, during and post COVID. All right, Alison, we were hearing or we're seeing rather closures already. Palace cinemas, we're seeing the gyms closing. And with one area now under quarantine and Jamaica being, being declared a disaster zone, if it gets to the point where Jamaica is closed off, can we really survive a total economic shutdown? I think we can. I mean, anybody that knows me, you know I declare happily that I'm from the country. A lot of us have found ourselves in Kingston and, you know, um, we're pushing people. Now is the time if that happens. I have no problems going back to Hanover and growing some yam. I will have to learn. So I don't think that if we had a complete economic um, collapse, which we know it's not going to happen, we're going to be fine. I'm just not thinking theoretical. There will be things for us to do. Um, we just have to have a mindset that the office job is not necessarily going to feed us and we need to ensure that we get back and do our liquor farming, do whatever it takes to keep us alive. Because let's be honest, there's opportunity there. So even if we had major or we have a major issues in the economy, it is time for us to really look at you know our backyard farming, looking at what kinds of things we can do that will make, be more productive because we need to consume locally. I mean, you heard Richard with the import bill. If that becomes an issue where we don't have the foreign dollars to buy any of that, we start to use our Jamaican. And like I said, I need to go back and start to plant some Lucy yam. So when we look at doom and gloom, always look at the rainbow ahead because in every doom, there is always something to find that can make life a lot better. One thing I think we should, as a country, start to think about, though, is perhaps unemployment insurance. We may want to look to see, with things like this happening, is it time? I know we have a lot of taxes and people get excited, but we may want to look to see from a safety net, is it something we need to be looking at from for the future, whereby we put little something aside and we force, because we don't save as much as we should. We're very consumer-driven. So one of the issues that we need to also look at individually is how do we personally cover ourselves also some of us have helpers some of us have gardeners we need to ensure that they get paid because if they're sitting at home how are they going to eat so each of us need to stop think reflect and start to share so again as a proud country person in country you have mango somebody has coconut you start to share i think we need to get back to the fundamentals of us being jamaican and remembering that we are a village and we are our brothers keepers or our sisters keepers so we need to start to start to look closer at our neighbors richard total economic well, shutdown is certainly something that you and your members would not want to see but first of all i want to make sure i put in an order for some lucy yam from allison please at a good price <laughs> um the second thing is that the, the economy needs to go on, right? We need to ensure that we're going to be reduced. I mean, we might have production will be reduced, et cetera, but we cannot shut down. We have to continue maintaining some level of production in the economy. So I don't expect a total shutdown because the COVID virus is not, and I'm going by the, 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 all the Minister of Health press conference and what I'm reading, you, you're going to be out when you get sick, 14 days, et cetera, right? So what you're going to have is a reduction in the amount of available workforce but not a complete absence. This is not the apocalypse, this is not infrastructure damage. So there is no reason for us not to continue to have production, even at a lower level, right through. We need the economy to keep going, or now we, we must be careful not to talk ourselves into a worse position, a worse recession that, need, that needs to be. So that is very, very important that we, that, we, that, we, that we do that. And we're planning for that contingency. So I don't expect a, a total economic shutdown. I expect people to behave to operate responsibly, to put the health of their employees first, to make sure that and to make sure that we're in a position where their personal economy doesn't get decimated. As Alison said, if each person economy gets decimated, the the massive effect of the total economy going to be 
unnecessarily large. So I mean, that's the position we're taking. And that's one of, you know, that's one thing I came out of the press conference. A lot of people, employees were, you know, thought the Prime Minister was sending them on a holiday. Although he kept saying, you know, he was, he was very clear, but people chose to hear what they wanted to hear. He's saying, if you're not required to be at work, stay at home. Those who are required to be at work, please do so, but let's take the proper precaution to ensure their safety and to minimize the spread of COVID-19. And that's the approach that the manufacturers are taking. So, and, and speaking about safety and security, should we be concerned about food security in, this, in, in light of this virus, Richard? Uh, and we have come out, and I have come out very publicly to say that we have been preparing. We, have, we do not believe we have any issue with food security. I think what we're having on right now is an unusual rush on demand because people are panicking and hoarding. And, you know, we have come out to say, and many manufacturers have come to say, guys, there's no need to panic like this. There's food supply. Conserve your cash. You know, I'll listen to refer to that. Don't spend all your money and buy 10 million toilet paper and, you know, 1 million tin of something. And then you sit on it. That's cash that you have now converted into something else that you can't use it for. So we need to be very smart in our homes because that's our personal economy again. And there's no need to be panicking, no need to be rushing, and no need to be denying somebody else the ability to have products in their home. Calm down, Jamaica. We have this. We have this, Jamaica. I mean, the food supply, your food distribution supply, manufacturing distribution supply, your farmers, I believe we have this. Don't worry. How, how much stock do we have? Uh, when you when you walk around and talk around, we we have easily. I mean, two to three months available. But remember that raw material is coming in all the time. To you know, the port hasn't closed. You know, we are getting raw material now, say from China, etc. So production is continuing. So if you take a spot check right now, I tell you, two to three months easily, even based on current demand. But and we're also we're also producing as we go along. And based on what you've said and what we're seeing as well, we're seeing China restarting it, jump-starting its economy, so we should possibly be seeing some more coming in. But I, I want to get back to the discussion about economic growth before we throw to the break. Uh, would the impacts of COVID-19 is somewhat reduce the prosperous growth that we've been seeing, the consecutive quarters of, 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 of economic growth? Will this diminish all that? What? But it must. I mean, I mean, Jamaica is not unique. This is happening globally. It's going to impact it. This is unusual time, so the growth will decline. But um, you know, so and people again, that shouldn't be the concern because it's, that's what it is. What I'm more concerned about is make sure we're prepared to come out of it very strong and prepared to jump. Because we well, we need to come out of this and grow even faster than we we're doing before to cover for this for this gap. I mean, this is just like. The country is like a business, you know. You have good times, you have bad times. This is an unusual time. And uh, it doesn't mean that at the end of the day, the business won't be stronger. So I, I'm not worried about the growth figures or GDP figures. That's almost irrelevant at this stage, in my opinion. Right now, we're where we are, and we need to prepare to get through this and then come out of it stronger. And just before we break, Alison? I agree. I mean, you know, mental stability is just as important as your physical. So I think we need to come out of our heads and come out of the numbers and realize that this is temporary. We need to use the time properly and planned. This is not holiday time. This is a time to take a deep breath and think, okay, what can I have done? What can I do better when we are back to normal? Also, I must commend Richard. I tried to drag him to a, a conference last week and Richard said, no, no, I am focused on COVID preparation and making sure that, you know, the food is there and that we're, we're doing all our tests. So what I like is when people are actually living what they say. So when you ask about security of food, there's a level of trust. I trust our Jamaican producers. I trust that we're going to have food. Why? They've always had food for us. So in terms of will the economy slow down, again, it's expected. So we should be calm about that. In certain aspects, we have to look at this to say it's hit us. People have predicted some aspects of this type of thing. I mean, we have hurricanes usually what we need to plan for. Thank God we're not going to have a hurricane. We need to use this Fingers time crossed. from an economic perspective to focus. And indeed, focus definitely. And we also have to eat a food here on the exchange. We take a final <laughs> break on the Financial Gleaner and Jane and Business Forum. When we come back, we'll have 
The final words for more panelists. Today, Bank of Jamaica briefed members of the Jamaica Bankers Association and the Jamaica Security Dealers Association on measures that the central bank would implement in order to assure financial institutions of adequate access to both foreign currency and Jamaica dollar liquidity throughout this challenging period. With the sharp contraction in the tourism industry and the likely disruption to remittance inflows, the supply of foreign exchange to the market will fall in the near term. The central bank will support the foreign exchange needs of businesses in the real sector through sales to authorized dealers and cambios as needed. Bank of Jamaica also stands ready to expand the volume of swap arrangements with authorized dealers. At the same time, the bank has asked security dealers and arrangers to postpone the issue of instruments denominated in foreign currency until the flows in the market can accommodate these capital market transactions. While the current holdings of Jamaica dollar liquid balances by the banking system are adequate for their immediate needs, Bank of Jamaica will facilitate expanded access to Jamaica dollar liquidity through the following channels. First, removing the current limits on the amounts that deposit-taking institutions can borrow overnight without being charged a penal rate. Overnight liquidity support will be made available at the prevailing rate of 2.5%, limited only by collateral. Second, the reintroduction of a facility whereby the central bank can make Jamaica dollar liquidity available for periods of up to six months. These lending arrangements can be backed by GOJ and BOJ securities. To enable access to liquidity by all financial institutions, the bank is also prepared to purchase GOJ securities on the secondary market from holders of these instruments to intermediate funds between holders of liquid balances and others who require the liquidity and to activate the emergency liquidity facility that was established in 2015 upon application by any financial institution. It will be critical that the financial system remains liquid and able to meet the needs of all stakeholders. Bank of Jamaica stands ready to ensure that orderly conditions are maintained. Welcome back to The Exchange, a financial gleaner and JNN business forum. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Javon Keyes. As this episode comes to a close, I'd like to ask our panelists to give their final remarks. Alison? Well, one thing I'd like to say, stay calm. Use the time valuably. If you have children, now is the time to spend with them. And remember, it's not a holiday. Find something productive. Now is the time if you were thinking, maybe possibly I should start a business but never had a chance to put a business plan together, now is the time to do it. My advice, search for some financial literacy courses so that when we're through this, you understand cash and you understand business. Even if you think that you shouldn't be in business, everybody has to manage their cash flow in their homes. So it's the time to focus and we will get through it. We're Jamaicans. We're always looking on the bright side. Thank you so much, Alison Richard. This is our time for collective effort. It's time for Jamaica to come together and there are opportunities now. I mean, people ought not to panic. We have this, we're gonna be very calm. It's a time to improve our security in many things that we do. And this is also, most importantly, a time to make sure that our most vulnerable citizens are looked after. Remember the elderly, remember the young, and let us be our brothers and sisters keepers. And I'm pleading to the wives to please tolerate your husband. We're not used to being at home for so long, so please, please, please don't kick us out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Richard. That's where we have to leave it on this episode of The Exchange. Thanks to our panelists, President of the Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association, Richard Pandohi, and Managing Director at A. Peart Advisory Services, Alison Peart. We encourage you to keep the conversation going by using the hashtags The Exchange and FGJNN. Follow us on Facebook, 
at Jamaica Gleaner and at Jamaica News Network, or rather that's Gleaner Jamaica. You can also catch us, well, catch this and all other episodes of The Exchange on onespotmedia.com. On behalf of the entire hardworking production team, thanks for watching. I'm Javon Keys. Pleasant viewing and please keep safe, Jamaica.